Okay, what's going on guys? Today I'm here with the uh, Bigfoot truck camper and uh, the plan is to rebuild all four camper jacks. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all four camper jacks uh, off the camper here at the uh, storage site and then I'm going to bring them home, replace all the seals and then bring them back here and then reinstall them. Okay, so the first one's coming off. This is our leaky, leaky culprit is why I'm rebuilding all four of them. As you can see, the oil is all over the outside. It's leaking, um, zoom in a little bit here if you can, all from like right in there, and then I think a bit out of there, so, and there, it's leaking everywhere. So, the first guy's coming off, it's got these two, um, these two shackles that have two bolts each that just mount to the plate on the camper. So, here we go, it's loaded in the truck. Okay, so I've got all four jacks home now. Um, as you can see, there are three that are the same, the hijacker ones, and then there's this fourth one. Um, I don't know if I can read the brand on that one. Uh, but the previous owner changed out one of the jacks, unfortunately, so they're not all the same. Um, but I'm going to re rebuild them all anyways. So if I find out what that one is, I'll uh, list it in the description too. So um, I thought this one was my only <clears throat> culprit for a problem because it's leaking from multiple places you know here here and it wouldn't go down all the way at the bottom compared to the other ones so i'm gonna rebuild them all anyways and make sure they're all cleaned up and nice and new replace all the o-rings and maybe replace some of the hardware and this one i didn't realize the leak was so bad but um, even on the one that he replaced there, it's still leaking quite a bit from somewhere. So we'll throw up one of the hijackers on the bench and we'll get started. All right, I'm going to start by uh, tearing this thing apart. So I'm going to remove these uh, lower brackets and then I'll start um, removing these upper components here. And noting that this is probably full of oil, so I'll probably have to get a bucket for that. All right, so I'm gonna take a half inch uh, socket and remove this and hopefully try and catch whatever oil is in here. Now there's no ring behind this bolt here. So we'll see if there's any pressure or fluid in here. Yeah, it all leaked out, so there's nothing in there. That's good. Should figure out a method to uh, remove these guys once the, once the truck camper's on the truck and take off like 200 pounds. These things gotta be like 50 pounds each. So I found a, a good method here to get all the fluid out is loosen up the, uh, I don't even know what you call this, the wing nut for the cylinder here. And then once it's loose, just start pumping. And then just basically pump it until all the fluids, so each pump, there's a bit of fluid coming out. So just pump it until all the fluid comes out there. Now we're going to take this um, cotter pin off that cotter pin hang on to it so you can reuse it flip this guy over take that pin out like that keep it with the cotter pin and then you can remove this whole mechanism okay so as you can see that just slid right out of the edge there or sorry the cylinder and then it's got an O-ring on it. So we'll replace that later on. Just set it aside. Then unscrew this guy. I don't know the technical terms for any of these. I'll have to look them up later. And then now that that guy's out, you're gonna take a, take some small snap ring pliers and then open this up. All right, I've got these uh, Craftsman uh, small snap ring pliers that just go in the two holes of the snap ring like that. And then you just separate, lift up. There you go, that's how you remove a snap ring safely. Now that the snap ring was removed from here, the cylinder will be pushed that direction. So you can either push it with your finger if that works. Oh, yeah, that worked. And then as we pull it out of here, you'll see where all the O-rings just lightly tap it out. Try not to damage anything. Let's see if that works. 
here we go. So here's the cylinder and it's got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, six different O-rings on it. So we'll take all those O-rings off and inspect the condition of them and install some new ones. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and replace these uh, six O-rings on the cylinder. Um, don't go buying um, repair kits because they're gonna be way more than they need to be. So you can just get these O-ring kits either on Amazon. Um, I got this from Princess Auto probably two or three years ago, and I've used it for you know things that I needed O-rings for over the years. And I'll be able to find an O-ring that matches one of these, and then just replace all six. So I think there's you know 20 of each O-ring in here depending on the size. So another good thing to have is these. Picky tools, I like to call them. And this, these will be good to dig out these O-rings. So let's go ahead and check out the condition is, conditions of these O-rings, starting from the uh, working our way outside in. See how brittle they are. Okay, that one feels a bit hard. Not cracking though. Second one, not too bad. So keep in mind here, we're leaving those ones with the holes open, and then we're gonna have the O-rings there. And then there's a little filter screen in the middle, and then there's three on this side. Okay. Oh, that one's gone. <laughs> Fell in between the two by fours in the wall on my workbench, I'm never getting that back again. And then keep in mind, there's also one on the interior of here where this cylinder goes inside, which there's also an O-ring. So there's an O-ring here and then an O-ring there, which they seal on. And then on this side, there is not an O-ring. So let's go ahead and pull this guy out as well. We'll see how it's doing. Oh. And it's on the floor. That one feels, I mean, it's it's not brittle, but it still feels pretty stiff. Okay, so I've noticed on, with these O-rings, the O-rings in this groove, this groove, this groove, and then this groove and this groove are all the same, but this one is smaller and it's the same size as the one that's inside here. So we'll go ahead and try and replace the smaller one on the inside here first. I'm gonna grab some oil and just lube up these new O-rings. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to put this guy in here. This guy might be harder. Hey, there we go. Make sure she's seated. Stick my pinky in there. Nice. I'll go to the for this one. There. I'll probably uh, pop up a diagram on the screen, um, but there's a diagram showing the cross section of uh, the cylinder with the O-rings and then the O-ring sizes, which will tell you these. Here, let me get my pointer. These three and four or five are the same. This one and this one are the same size. So I've got all these O-rings uh, changed out, and now we can move on to the rest, the remainder of the O-rings, which is gonna be, there's a few more here. So for the cylinder um, where the lever is, there's one here, there's one on your screw, and then there's also supposed to be one on the bolt that goes on the top of the cylinder reservoir where you fill the fluid in. For the reservoir fill bolt, Lube it up, push it on. Good to go, like that. Um, fits much better. I just tested it out in the cylinder. The last one seemed to uh, chew up the inside O-ring when I was in there. So, there we go. This one is a much better fit and it's still snug. Okay, 
So now that I've replaced all the O-rings, um, I'm going to reassemble. I'm going to have to run the Canadian tire and grab some uh, hydraulic fluid for this. Uh, I was just using power steering fluid before, but I'll assemble this and then I'll show you how to prime it. So this side with the bigger side of the cylinder comes in from this end where the bracket is. screw back in. Put the plunger back on. And then our cotter pins. And then cherry on top. Before we go get some hydraulic fluid, let's put this bolt back on. Okay, so the priming process on all these jacks is the same. What you want to do is make sure that the jack is all the way to the bottom. Um, and then open up your, your fill port here. This is just a half inch uh, bolt. Open it up, fill it up with hydraulic fluid, and then close it back up. Replace the O-ring on the bolt if it's bad. And then... Uh, to prime it, what you do is you close your valve all the way and then put your feet on the bottom and then pull up all the way and then you open up your valve a few turns like that so it's open so it's open and then you let it back down and then keep it keep pushing all the way to the bottom you'll feel some pressure here and that's priming the the jack and then once it's back fully to the bottom you reclose your valve all the way and then that's it that's the simple priming process and then you just jack it up a little bit to see if it works and just like that no problem okay so i just wanted to show you the sizes of o-rings that i used on the cylinder um so uh, I originally started with a metric uh, O-ring kit and I moved over to a standard O-ring, a standard sizing O-ring kit um, because I found that the sizes worked and sealed better. Also, for my camper, I had the original hydraulic camper jack. Um, I don't know if this is the brochure or the how-to manual, but um, it's got the installation instructions as well as um, part numbers, recommendations, service instructions. Uh, as well as the diagram. So what I'll do is I'll scan and either throw this as a picture on the video or link the scan document in the description below. Um, oh, here's actually all the part numbers. So um, what I'll do is I'll link that in the description box below or put it on the screen for you to see. These are, this is the original uh, hijacker uh, document documentation. Okay, so just real quick, after scanning this document um, and reading through it a bit, the O-ring sizes on the cylinder, it refers to 12 and 13. And on the previous page, it actually tells you, um, you know, number 12 here, static O-rings, half inch inside diameter, and then 13, check valve and OR pack and O-ring, 7 16 inside diameter. So this document contains the correct sizing and diagrams on how to rebuild these jacks. And then it also has troubleshooting, um, so common common problems and then possible causes with the uh, ways to fix them. Cool, so thanks for watching and hope that helps.